So I've been meaning to do a little introduction video and I've actually gave this a go, but talking straight to camera the whole time, just, I don't know, it's, I'm not good at doing that. <laughs> so I need something to distract myself. I need to be doing something while I'm talking. So I thought I'll just do this little series and we're going to call it Real Talk because I'm very clever with names. Um, basically any like questions I get from you guys or any specific topics I want to talk about, um, I'll do it in this format because it's just, it gives me something to do. I feel like I can talk a lot more casually if I'm doing something and I can always just edit it down because I know when I'm throwing, for example, I have pause where I'm doing stuff. I'll just completely shut down and not talk at all, um, which is fine, but I can just edit those out and that'll be okay. So recently I got a question about how I felt confident or when do you know you're ready to, I guess, go out on your own and, you know, do a bit more stuff at home and stuff like that to improve and process and eventually maybe go into looking into a career of ceramics, for example. Um, and I'll also take this opportunity to like just a quick introduction to, you know, who I am and what I've been doing. And hopefully that gives a little bit of a idea of what's possible. Um, because for example, timeline is different for everyone. Some people could pick things up really quick and within six months they can make things that are you know, good enough that they can sell and they can, you know, progress really quickly and improve really quickly. But some people might take longer. So, um, I'm just giving an example of what I've done and, you know, my sort of timeline that's gone up to this point. Um, so while I'm doing that, I'm just going to do a bit of trimming. So I threw this. I threw this at the live stream on Reddit. Um, it's a recycled clay, so you can still see a bit of like black marbling in it. It's because I didn't wedge it very well. Um, it's not on purpose. And so it's a little bit of a heavy side. I, I think I like what the top's doing. And I think the bottom just needs to kind of really trim down to match the rest of it. Um, I'm just going to throw, because of how small the room is, I'm not going to put all that weight on it. I'm just going to use a chuck. Um, there's a video on how to use this or like how to make one of these. And it's really helpful for shapes like these or, you know, taller vases that just won't sit on it properly. I'm using a bat mat that's damp and I also wet the bottom of this. So it's kind of like stuck on it. Um, it should provide these in the amount of stability. I'm hoping don't think that's too bad. Um, so anyway, uh, for those that you don't know, my name's Kevin, and so welcome to The Ali's YouTube channel. So often I get messages where people assume my name's Ali. So today I just want to talk about how I got into ceramics and, you know, what I've done along the way to get to this point. So I started about two and a bit years ago. So I'm also a food photographer, so I work with food stylists a lot where they just have massive collections of um, props that we use for photo shoots. And often it's handmade ceramics, that's just, it's really nice. And I just, I fell in love with, you know, the idea of making something that I can photograph or like that's good enough that I can use in shoots and stuff. Um, so that's kind of how the idea came by. And then also, so Ali, the brand name Dear Ali kind of, it's named after my Samoyed who have popped up in a few videos here and there. Do you mind? No, Ali. No. Can I please record a video without you interrupting? No? Okay. And it was a bit of a joke when I said, okay, I want to, you know, make a ceramics brand that's, that only sells white, you know, porcelain because Ali is a Samoyed and she's pure white and we'll name it after her. Uh, so that kind of changed because I realized there are lots of brands that do pure white stuff and minimalistic stuff very well. There's a lot less to hide behind. So in order to make a, I guess, a brand that works with such a simple aesthetic, it needs to be really good. And I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve that in a reasonable timeline. In the future, I'll definitely have like a line that's, you know, more the minimalistic style, but I also do enjoy things that are a little bit more rustic. I mean, the style is still a ever-changing thing. Like nothing's really decided yet. Um, and even, you know, it can evolve along the years as well. So I'm not really 
concerned about finding something that I'll stick to forever. Um, I think being flexible and you know adapting is a good thing. Because of that idea, I start you know thinking about it and. Usually if I have a hobby or something that I enjoy doing, I always turn it into a career or a business. Um, that's what happened with photography and I think that's what's gonna happen with ceramics as well. So I enrolled in a beginner's throwing class that runs for eight weeks per term here in Melbourne from a ceramic place called Soka. So it's School of Clay and Art. And that's where I learned how to throw. So I did that for about two years. And along the way, after after the second term, I started practicing outside of class because I realized doing three hours a week or two and a half hours a week was just not enough. Like I needed more just hours on the wheel. And I think without that, you can have the greatest teacher in the world, but if you're not getting in those practicing hours, um, it's really hard to improve. Uh, so there's a studio that where I'm firing now and they also have a studio access where they have wheels and you know basic equipments that you can use and you, it's just charged by the hours and it actually caps at like $35 for the day. So that was great. So I'll just go in um, with no intention of keeping anything. I'll just throw, so they have like recycled clay that you can use for cheap. And I'll just throw for four or five hours. Um, so I did that for maybe once a week on top of the class. Uh, not that consistently, to be honest, because it's a bit of a hassle sometimes. And that's when I realized I really needed a home studio because being able to just, you know, throw an hour here and hour there, it really makes it um, easier to practice and just to, and I wanted to do videos. I always knew that I wanted to do a bit of work for the social media, for the YouTube, um, just as like a you know, documenting process as well as marketing like starting a brand from scratch when you don't even have I guess a proper product ready to go um, it's hard to do any marketing and I want to build a little bit of a I guess audience before I even think about selling my first batch and yeah so to answer the question of like when when are you ready for me when I realize I can make things that I want even though they might not be perfect but I can get them to a point where I'm happy to use them, that I think it's decent. Um, I can, you know, I have the basic technique to figure out things that I've never done before. For example, when I did the, what was it, the fermentation crock in the previous video, I've never done that technique before in terms of um, rolling the rim down and splitting it and stuff like that. But I've seen it done before and I know what the clay is gonna do. So I was able to, I guess, problem solve, that sort of thing. Obviously you can learn that from, you know, watching other people and having class and stuff. But I think when you have the basic skill set, and so for example, you know how to pull, you know how to make things thinner, you can color, you can, those really basic tools in your toolkit, then you'll be able to figure out a lot of things just by seeing, you know, what needs to be done and what you can do. I think this is still a little bit wet, so it's not, trimming as nice as it should. After two years of class, we moved to a new house here. Finally, I have space that I can use to have my own studio. So that was also a turning point where now that I have access to the space, I need the money to you know buy the things and um, the wheel, for example, is a bit more expensive and to pay the extra rent that we're paying now. So I decided to quit class. It was just, it was just a pro and con. Like if, if money is not an issue and if time is not an issue, I would continue class because I think it's a great, great um, social kind of, you know, it's it's fun. You catch up every week, you talk about ceramics a bit and you also just, you know, talk about life and it's a really nice environment. And, you know, you have someone there that you can ask questions whenever you're trying to figure out stuff. Um, like I was learning about, you know, I was like questions about glazing and stuff that weren't really in the beginners class anyway. I'm sure most teachers are more than happy to answer any questions you have. So yeah, so when I got my own wheel, that's when I realized I don't really need the class. I can, you know, I've got the basic skills that I can kind of practice on my own and figure things out. And I think what's more important at that point was to find a style. To do that, basically, I just want to make things as much as I can until I know what 
I like to make and I know what I want to show the world basically. So I think I'll definitely do another video on like the creative process because it's it's very similar to what I went through becoming a photographer. And I think it's gonna it's very similar to any creative pursuit, really. And then I think it's been about six months. No, not even. Maybe like four months since I've got the home studio set up. So I've just been doing the YouTube side of things and still trying to figure out the style. I'm developing a glaze, um, which is very hot right now because we just went into a full lockdown where all retail shops are closed, which means I'm not able to fire my things at the studio. So that kind of threw my plan off for what I'm doing this month. You never really know, know when you're ready, but if you have the opportunity, for example, when I kind of, you know, had the space that I can do that and I had the resource where I can, you know, buy a wheel and all that stuff, then take it. I gave myself a year or two to go to class to make sure that it's something that I really want to do and I really want to stick to um, and make sure that I'm serious about it before I start buying things and investing the time and the effort into it. But I guess when you get to a point where you like, you just have to do it, you know, it's like, I can't imagine not having a studio at home. I can't imagine not being able to do this whenever I want. Um, for me, that's when it's like, it's pretty clear. This is what I want to do. And I think that's the same with making this into a business as well. It's like, that's just a basic little background of how I've gotten to this point. Um, so it's really simple, really. I just started class because I wanted to make this as a business. And then having the YouTube actually forces me to do things that I might not be familiar with because you can only make a video of throwing bowls and plates so often until you need something different. And I'm always looking for interesting shapes or interesting forms to make things that are just fun and different and I can figure it out. For example, that's why like throwing a donut was really fun. That was like the first complex shape that I learned, but I'm just rambling a little bit now. All right, I think that's it. Um, took a little bit longer than I expect it, but it's a little bit heavy on the belly, like here. Feels a little bit wide, maybe. Yeah, I don't mind it. I think it's an interesting shape. Yeah, I think moon jars like this are probably, ooh, one of the trickier shapes for me. Just trying to like figure out what looks good aesthetically and also making sure it feels right. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to see any photos and stuff or finished things, just make sure you follow me on Instagram, which you can find from the homepage of this channel. And yeah, I'll see you next time.